This is section 4.5 on linearization and Newton's method. We have a linear approximation. In our study of the derivative, we have frequently referred to the tangent line to the curve at a point. What makes that tangent line so important mathematically is that it provides a useful representation of the curve itself if we stay close enough to the point of tangency. We say that the differentiable curves are always locally linear, a fact that can be best appreciated graphically by zooming in at a point on the curve as exploration one shows. What all this means is we have this curve and all curves are locally linear which means if you zoom in enough eventually that curve is going to start looking like a line. Eventually it's linear which means we can take a tangent line and we can estimate the value of the curve by using that line as long as we stay relatively close to the center point or else our y values start becoming really far apart. For example, if we use this value, y value, to estimate the curve's y value, that's starting to get far apart. Now the curve could curve back up and the two y values could eventually be the same thing again, but that's only by coincidence. So as long as we are relatively close to the point of tangency, the line can estimate the curve. We have a definition of linearization. If f is differentiable at x equals a, then the equation of the tangent line, uh, l of x equals f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a, defines the linearization of f at a. Now this looks real fancy, but it's just uh, the equation of a line. It's y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1 except you know to find the slope in this case we're going to use the derivative and they've added the y1 over this is y1 this is f of a it's the function value or the y when you plug a in or some x value the approximation f of x is approximately l of x is the standard linear approximation of f at a the point x equals a is the center of the approximation so here's an example find the linearization of this parabola at x equals 2 so the center is 2. Now this line that we're going to find, the equation of this tangent line, uh, it's a good approximation as long as we stay close to 2. If we get very, you know, if we get far away from 2, the y values are going to be way off. Well this is the equation of a line, so we need a point. The x is 2, and we need the y. So if we take 2 squared is 4, minus 4 is 0, and then we have minus 15. So we have the point 2, <clears throat> negative 15. Now we need the slope. And the derivative of x is 2x minus 2. And we're going to evaluate that at x equals 2. Which is 4 minus 2, which is 2. So the slope is 2. Now the equation of the line, the linearization, is y plus 15 equals 2 times x minus 2. Now what they've done here is they've just added the y value over. So we have y equals negative 15 plus 2 times x minus 2. And of course in this case we minus 15 rather than add. Now if we plug those values into the calculator, if we plug 1.9 in to the original function, we get negative 15.19. If we plug 1.9 into the line we found, the tangent line, uh, the approximation is negative 15.2. And these are fairly close, they're only 0 .01 off, and they're close because we stayed close to the center. 1.9 is very close to 2. Differentials. Let y equals f of x be a differentiable function. The differential dx is an independent variable. The differential dy is dy equals f prime of x times dx. Now all that seems kind of complicated, but it's actually rather straightforward. In letter A, we want to find dy dx, which is 5x to the fourth plus 37. And now we can multiply both sides by dx. These differentials act like variables. So dy equals 5x to the fourth plus 37, and then all of that times dx. We want to evaluate this when x is 1 and when the differential is 0 0.01. So we have 5 times 1 to the 4th plus 37 and then times 0 0.01. So
So 5 plus 37 is 42 times 0 0.01. That's 0.42. Now what we found is when x changes by 0 0.01, y changes by 0 0.42. These differentials mean slight changes in the variables. Or that's what they represent, I should say. Letter B, we're going to take the derivative of this function. We're going to take dy dx, and that's equal to 3 cosine of 3x. We'll multiply the dx over to the other side, which makes it 3 cosine of 3x times dx. And then we are supposed to evaluate this when x is pi and dx is negative 0.02. So we have 3 cosine of 3 pi times negative 0 0.02. The cosine of 3 pi, there's the unit circle, there's 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi. So the cosine of 3 pi is negative 1. So we have negative 3 times negative 0 0.02. And finally, we have 0 0.06. So when x changes uh, by negative 0 0.02, y changes by 0 0.06. Letter C, we want to take the derivative implicitly. So we have uh, actually 1 plus dy dx is equal to first times derivative of second plus second times derivative of the first. Now we want to get dy dx by itself, and we can factor once we minus this x over. So we have 1 minus x, and then we want to minus the 1 over which is y minus 1. So dy equals y minus 1 over 1 minus x times dx. We want to evaluate that when x, I believe, is 2, possibly. Yes, when x is 2, but we have to find out what y is. So we can plug 2 into the, into the function, which is uh, two, 2 plus y equals 2y minus the y over and we find out that the y is 2 also. So we have the point 2, 2. And let's see, what is the differential? It's 0 0.05. And dx equals 0 0.05. So we have 2 minus 1 over 1 minus 2 and then times 0 0.05 which is, that'll be negative 1 because we have 1 over negative 1 negative 0 0.05. Uh, once again, that means when x is changing by 0 0.05, the y is also, well, it's changing by negative. Uh, the y changes by negative 0 0.05. In example 8, we're estimating change with differentials. The radius r of a circle increases from 10 to 10.1. Use dA to estimate the increase in the circle's area Compare this estimate with the true change, A, and find the approximation error. Uh, we have enough stuff to do. We don't really find approximation errors uh, in here. So the area of a circle is pi r squared. And then dA over dr, the derivative of the area with respect to the radius, is 2 pi r. And then we can get that dr to the other side by multiplying. So we have 2 pi r dr. Now the, the radius is 10, so we're going to plug 10 in for r. And if we take 10 minus 10.1, we get 0.1. So the change in the radius is 0.1. We'll multiply this by 0.1. So we have 20 times 0.1, which is 2. So when the radius changes by 0.1, the area is changing by 2 pi.